I want to turn this in a, in a slightly different direction on, on this discussion tonight. I won't call it a debate. Um, regretfully, Mr. Chair, it began to look at, as a debate and it started to become hostile. And I don't think that that was the original intent of the evening. I think that a number of uh, members this evening have actually put forward very heartfelt, well-founded, evidence-based additional solutions. And I think there's a lot of frustration because those on this side of the House are getting frustrated that the government does not appear to be open whatsoever to any new ideas or any new investment. Mr. Chair, I became involved in caring about this issue because of one of my constituents and a dear friend, Petra Schultz. And Petra Schultz, um, I talked to last evening in preparing to come to this debate. And I told her I probably wouldn't have much chance to speak, but I wanted to share some of her experience. And many of you have probably become familiar with Petra because she has been covered very widely in the national media. Petra lost her youngest child, Danny, at the age of 25 to an accidental fentanyl dose in 2014. And it's important to recognize that Danny, like many with opioid addictions, had attended treatment. But like many, or at least some addicted, they often will revert to access to opioids again because it is an addiction, as much as they do not want to. It's also very important to understand that Petra is one of hundreds of mothers across this country who have come together to call on this government to take deeper action. And the kind of actions that they're calling for are exactly the recommendations that have been made tonight in this debate. And where do those recommendations for action come from? Well, they come from the health and legal experts in our country. So these mothers aren't just coming up with these ideas off the top of their head. They work very hard. Uh, they don't want any more children lost in this country. So Petra, along with uh, those who are the other mothers, have participated in everything they can do. They go and talk at schools. They meet with government and so forth. And they have actually come forward through mumstoptheharm.com to ask for specific actions. And they have asked for this government to take a public health approach to drugs based on evidence and human rights. Harm reduction is a key component of a comprehensive response to drugs to prevent drug-related harm and death. And they have called for the decriminalization of possession of drugs for personal use as an essential to public health approach. And Petra says it's fundamental to remove the stigma. That's what removing the stigma means. Many don't seek the treatment because they are drug users, and our society does not look fondly on drug users. Now, I, I mentioned that uh, these mums have taken action together. They all wrote to the Prime Minister, and they wrote to the Federal Minister of Health, and not a single one of those mothers has received a response. Not one single one of those mothers who have lost a child to addictions to opioids have received a response to their letter to the Prime Minister or to the Minister of Health. I would recommend tonight that might be a start. For if you really care about the trauma of suffering of losing somebody to addiction to opioids. Um, I could quote if I had more time, which I don't, also Leslie McBain, who also lost her son, is one of the co-founders of this organization. She is calling in desperation for this government to decriminalize the drug. Um, she, says, she says, jail has never cured addiction. For every dollar spent in harm reduction, seven dollars is saved in medical care enforcement and the criminal justice system. So I, I desperately, on behalf of all these mothers who have lost their children to this addiction and because they could not receive the support that they would have deserved, I beg this government to give deep consideration to acting expeditiously on the recommendations that have been made this evening by all members on all sides of this place. We can't wait any longer. 10,000 Canadians lost to opioid addictions, addictions, to fentanyl, which kills, to carfentanyl, which kills. We took the action on SARS. The federal government has the spending power. They transfer money for mental health. 
Surely to heavens, if we accept that opioid addictions are a mental health problem, why can they not transfer additional funds? We're not telling them to set up these centres. We're simply saying the provinces, the municipalities, the towns, the First Nations are begging for the federal government to step in and give more assistance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? The Honourable Member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I really want to thank my colleague from Edmonton, Strathcona. I, too, have met with mothers uh, in my office, um, some children who they've been able to bring back from the brink, uh, but they constantly have a watchful eye on, mothers who are looking for a way to be part of the solution, who are asking for desperate and urgent help from this government. And I do appreciate where the member brings up the issue of SARS. You know, 10,000 people have died of opioid addiction in our country. And I want to raise another uh, emergency situation that we acted on. That was the H1N1 flu virus. In 2009, we had 428 deaths, and we called an emergency uh, public health emergency in our country, which triggered mobilized centers with 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for weeks, for weeks. And that stopped and stemmed the deaths that we are experiencing and put us back on a pathway to health. New Democrats aren't alone in calling for a national public health emergency in this country because what the government is doing is not enough. We cannot in this House pat ourselves on the back and say we're doing everything within our power. And the government has the ability to call for this national public health emergency today and start to turn this conversation into one where we're saving people. Can the member speak to what that would look like in Edmonton and Strathcona and to the mothers that she's met with? What would that mean to hear this government respond in that urgent way? The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Yes, I'd like to thank my colleague from Essex. I'd like to thank all the colleagues in this place that spoke tonight. But as a lawyer, I want to reiterate what my uh, colleague said earlier. The law defines a national emergency as an urgent and critical situation of a temporary nature that seriously endangers the lives, health, or safety of Canadians and of such proportion or nature as to exceed the capacity or authority of a province. We have not heard any rational response from the government this evening to why it is that they do not see this crisis of 10,000 Canadians who have been killed by an opioid overdose of why they do not think that this is a situation where we should be calling for this national health emergency and triggering every conceivable mechanism available at all levels of government. 